So it looks like Google did it again. Happy Thanksgiving. Google has rolled out another update that has basically crushed email deliverability to Google Mailboxes. Now, I'm in a mastermind chat with all of the top minds in cold email, the people who own the companies, the top 1% of cold email agencies, and this is happening ubiquitously across every infra provider, whether you're using Google or Microsoft or SMTP. If you're having trouble delivering to Google, you're not alone. This video is going to cover that update, what happened and what to do about it. Let's jump right in. There's going to be no fancy editing here. I just wanna bring you exactly what happened and what to do, and please make sure to stay tuned so that you know what we learn and what we implement to get around these new updates. Now, if you're relatively new to cold email, this might be a really scary situation for you. Because you're like, oh my God, half of the users on email are using Google. We're not gonna be able to send cold emails to Google anymore. Oh no, the world is on fire. Well, traditionally, that's just not been true. This happened earlier this year and last year with Microsoft. They raised a whole bunch of guardrails and it became really difficult to send cold emails to Microsoft. Nobody knew how to inbox to Microsoft. Fast forward to today, we're delivering about 100% of emails to Microsoft mailboxes. Now, if you're scared about this current Google update, don't be. There's likely a few different things going on that are at play that we're going to talk about today. But just know that this is probably not gonna last and we're gonna learn how to get around this. So let's go ahead and share my screen just to show you uh, deliverability to Google before this update was about 100%. Over the past week, however, it has dropped by 50%. This is in my instantly uh, with our Google mailboxes, and this has been happening with our premium SMTP mailboxes, Mission Inbox, um, one of our deliverability coaches, Tony Baltadano, is excellent. They do as good of a job as possible uh, at, at building their mailboxes. We use them, they're awesome. Also having trouble delivering to Google, as well as Microsoft. So what do we do about this? What happened? Well, the going consensus is it's related to this update that Google recently rolled out. And if you've been following my content, you know that Google just did a big wave of cold email updates to basically stop people setting up Google, uh, cold email mailboxes inside of their legacy panels. This update is likely related. It's their latest attempt at blocking cold email. And what we think happened is they raised too many guardrails. So what they're saying here is they're getting a little bit stricter with authentication when sending to Google. What does that mean? Well, they're probably going to be looking at copy. They're going to be enforcing DNS records. Now, we're doing the right things anyway. If you're sending cold emails without your domain set up correctly, without good DNS records, you're probably going to be in trouble. Now, what the future is going to be about is decreasing fingerprints. So on most of your cold emails, by the way, I'm gonna link this article down in the description so that you can see. It's basically just saying that they're going to be enforcing the rules that we're already following except one click unsubscribe, we're not doing that. Do not do that. But mostly it's gonna be about copy and it's going to be about proving to Google that you're a good sender. And the ways to do that are good warm up and domain age, which might be a big factor in this recent update. But the other things that you can do to curb those fingerprints, uh, if let's just go ahead and open up some of my email accounts here. What the best practice has been uh, to date today has to be to set up these custom tracking domains for all of your domains. This is a CNAME record that you put in your domain DNS that points to instantly. My guess is that in the future, Google and other ESPs like Microsoft are going to look at the DNS records and say, wow, all of these domains are pointing to this one IP from instantly. They're probably sending cold emails, so we're not doing that anymore. Uh, and you don't need a custom tracking domain if you're not tracking opens or link clicks uh, so we're just removing this going forward. The other big thing here is they're probably using AI to screen for spammy promotional messaging. Now, if you are relatively new to cold email, then you probably don't know what words and phrases to avoid. A good cold email should be short and it should not have any salesy or promotional language. If they detect that language, they're probably going to send your emails to spam. You also, be want, you also want to use lots of spin tacks. So in your campaigns, as you're putting together your copy here, you should make sure that you're using lots of spin tacks in your copy so that it uh, switches between all of these different variations. That way the email service providers don't detect the same message over and over again, and then your deliverability stays intact. And if that's still not working, you might wanna 
consider switching all of your copy, uh, getting rid of all of the current spin tax, current copy, and switching it to something completely different to see if that helps. Now, the other big suspect here, and this is, by the way, my conversation with all of the top names in cold email. Uh, one of us will say, hey, this is going on. We're seeing a drop in deliverability to Google. Everybody's seeing it. Google to Google, Outlook to Google. This, these are the top names in the industry that are facing this issue. This is happening across the board, across every email provider. So switching from Google to Microsoft or Microsoft to Mission Inbox, it's probably not gonna make a difference at this time. The general recommendation is to follow best practices and hang tight, hang tight. Uh, the main reason for that is they probably lifted too many guardrails. We don't have concrete answers as to what the answer is yet. Could be domain age, could be something specific you're saying in those emails. It could be the custom tracking domains. What we learned about six months ago is that it was the one-click unsubscribe links that was actually causing emails to go to spam. So as myself and the top names in the cold email space are running tests, investigating, uh, Google has lifted their barriers to like maximum restrictions, especially around this time of the year when everybody sends even more cold, spammy promotional emails for the holidays. So that is the third variable that's at play here. Google's lifting even more to reduce user spam because a lot of people are sending those promotional emails right around this time and they want to reduce those as much as possible. Now the other big question is, is this related to the recent ban on Google legacy panels? Uh, and the answer is, I don't think so. So a lot of the ones that they banned, um, you can still use those domains that were banned from Google Workspace, can't be moved to others. You can use those domains inside of SMTP providers. You can use them in Microsoft. And that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, and I, from what I can tell, they're not on any blacklists. They seem to be performing fine. Uh, but there's definitely that suspicion that if they were blacklisted that once, they were removed. Um, is Google looking at all of them and not delivering to Google even if those domains are used in other providers? And the answer is maybe, uh, maybe. However, because the issue expands well beyond those domains to fresh domains, domains that are with Mission Inbox or, or Microsoft that have never been on a Google workspace are still hitting spam on Google, tells me that it's probably unrelated. It's probably just Google putting up maximum defenses uh, and then we're, we're, we need to learn how to either get around them or Google needs to drop their defensive because they went overboard. Whenever this happens, good emails are also not getting through to Google mailboxes. It's not like Google can say, we're not going to allow emails from any domain less than one year old. Yeah, that would be a good way to probably kill most cold email, but it would also kill deliverability for any new startup who launches a company, buys a domain, starts sending from that domain, and that's also not something that they want to do. So this happens at least once a year. The general advice is hang tight. Uh, we're, all, we're all investigating. The best thing that you can do is follow best sending practices and make sure to be inside of a community like the insiders where they get information first. They know exactly what to do first. And for now, what you can do is just not send to Google mailboxes. So inside of Instantly AI, if you wanted to, once you upload leads to a campaign, Instantly will automatically go through those leads and tell you what provider that they're on. So you can at, literally add the leads, select only the Microsoft or only the Google, and move them into another campaign that's on draft and save them for later. Um, that way you're not wasting those sends to Google for the time being. This is a practice that you can consider doing if you're inboxing 0% to Google. Uh, well, this is all resolved. As you can see, email provider Google, Google, Microsoft. What you would do in this case is just go through, find the Googles lead ESP equals Google. And then what you can do is just literally select all of them and move them to another campaign. That way you're not sending to Google while this issue is happening. And by the way, if this happens again, and it, maybe it's Microsoft next month or private SMTPs the next month, then you can do the same thing. You'll upload the leads, move all the Google somewhere, and save them for when deliverability is fixed. There's a pretty common workaround and practice that most of the top cold emailers do and something that becomes extra relevant right now. So that's definitely something you should consider doing. And how long do I think until this issue is kind of permanently resolved? Usually anywhere from two to four weeks, if it lasts longer than eight weeks max. 
During that time, myself and all of the, the people in my network are doing lots of tests. We're gonna keep you updated along the way. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you know what the result of these tests are, what the general recommendations are. But right now, you should just not be afraid. You should understand that no matter what info provider you're using, we're all struggling to get into Google right now. Even the top names, literally the top names, are also struggling to inbox to Google. So you're not alone. This is part of the world of cold email. And this happens all the time across every marketing channel. SEO ads, algorithms change, we adapt. So hang tight, stay tuned for updates, and just know that I've got your back and I'm with you and happy Thanksgiving.